Hi, this is just a brief technical note to accompany the talk on Ruth chapter 4 uh, for the 27th of September 2020. Because it doesn't change the direction of the talk all that much and because not everyone is going to be interested in the technicalities, I thought it would be best to record it as a sort of addendum. Uh, so what you've got in Ruth chapter 4 is a situation where Boaz has agreed to be the guardian redeemer for Ruth and he's also agreed to marry her. And those two things could do with a bit of a deeper look because it's actually a, a bit of a surprise that they come together. So the role of guardian redeemer was principally to do with land. It's a provision of Israelite family law and you find it in Leviticus chapter 25. Now here it is, uh, reporting the words of God, the land must not be sold permanently because the land is mine and you reside in my land as foreigners and strangers. Throughout the land that you hold as a possession, you must provide for the redemption of the land. If one of your fellow Israelites becomes poor and sells some of their property, their nearest relative is to come and redeem what they have sold. So the theological basis of this is that the land actually belongs to God and he parceled it out tribe by tribe, clan by clan to the Israelites as a spiritual blessing. And so it wasn't to be sold irredeemably. There had to be a way to keep the land in the hands of the clans it was given to. Uh, this is why incidentally in 1 Kings 21 where King Ahab of Israel wants to buy Naboth's vineyard. Naboth says to him, the Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my fathers. But as we all know, things can go south in life and sometimes someone uh, had no choice other than to sell their land. And the role of the guardian redeemer was to step in and buy it from whomever it had been sold to so that it could be kept in the family. He was to act as a kind of trustee uh, with a responsibility to return the land to the original owner or his heirs in due course. And this is relevant to the book of Ruth because we find in chapter 4 that Naomi is having to sell uh, her land because she is poor. Her husband is dead and so are her sons. Uh, she's destitute. Well, there were one or two other responsibilities of a guardian redeemer. But interestingly, the responsibility to marry the widow of a distant relative is not one of them. And yet Boaz has agreed to marry Ruth. There was, of course, the law of leveret marriage, and you find this in Deuteronomy chapter 25. It's quite separate from the instructions uh, about the guardian redeemer found in the book of Leviticus. Um, here it is, leveret marriage, Deuteronomy 25 verse 5. If brothers are living together and one of them dies without a son, his widow must not marry outside the family. Her husband's brother shall take her and marry her and fulfill the duty of a brother-in-law to her. The first son she bears shall carry on the name of the dead brother so that his name will not be blotted out from Israel. Ruth is certainly a widow and she has no children. But Boaz is not her dead husband's brother. In fact, if you remember back to chapter 1 of Ruth, where Naomi was trying to persuade Ruth not to come with her to Bethlehem, uh, it was because she saw no prospects for Ruth back there in Bethlehem. I skirted around this a bit when we looked at it in chapter 1, but what Naomi says to Ruth back, back there in verses 12 and 13 is, Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? 
She's thinking of the law of leveret marriage there and pointing out how ridiculous it is to rely on it. First she'd have to find another husband herself, then she'd have to have sons, and then Ruth and Orpah, her other daughter-in-law, would have to wait for those sons to grow up at a marriageable age. It's a, it's a reductio ad absurdum. The point is that the law of leveret marriage was not going to help their situation. So when Ruth asks Boaz to marry her in chapter 3, because he is the guardian redeemer, she's asking him to go way, way beyond what was expected of a guardian redeemer and was asking him to take on the role of a levir as well. Well, so in chapter 4, Boaz pitches up at the town gate of Bethlehem, uh, the place where all the legal business was done. The ancient city gate at Bethlehem has not yet been found and is probably many feet below uh, the modern town somewhere. But here's the impressive gate from the northern city of Dan. And here's a child who will not want to be identified sitting on the raised platform which might have been the seat of a king or a town elder when judicial procedures were taking place. And so uh, this in Bethlehem is where Boaz has come and he's come to the city gate because he's on the lookout for a chap who he knows is actually a closer relative in Naomi's family and who therefore has a higher claim on the role of guardian redeemer if he wants to take it. Now we're never told the name of this person uh, so I'm going to have to call him Mr X. It's probably a bit of an insult that he's not named and the reason that the author wants to insult him is that he turns out to be a, a bit of a rat bag. So this is what happens. Boaz sees Mr X verse 1 and he calls him over and he also gathers 10 elders verse 2 so that the legal proceedings can begin and he says to Mr X verse 3 Naomi who has come back from Moab is selling the piece of land that belonged to our relative Elimelech I thought I should bring the matter to your attention and suggest that you buy it in the presence of these seated here and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, do so, but if you will not, tell me so I will know. For no one has the right to do it except you, and I am next in line. And Mr X replies, I will redeem it. And of course he will. I mean, what an amazing bargain Mr X is getting if he acts as the guardian redeemer. Naomi is a widow. Her two sons have died and there are no grandchildren. Mr X can have the land and he's never going to have to restore it to the closer family line. Never, ever, ever, because no closer line is ever going to exist. I will redeem it, he says. And you can see the glint in his eye as he considers his great fortune. Now here's where it gets puzzling, at least to me. Verse 5, then Boaz said, On the day that you buy the land from Naomi, you also acquire Ruth the Moabite, the dead man's widow, in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property. And this is why it's puzzling. First of all, from what we know from the Hebrew Bible, it would not have been Mr X's responsibility to marry Ruth. And that's what is meant by acquire here, because the effect is that her previous husband's name is maintained with his property. This is the leveret arrangement from Deuteronomy 25, not the guardian redeemer arrangement of Leviticus 25. And so some of the commentators say, well, perhaps there was more to these customs than the Bible tells us. Well, perhaps so. But I'm left asking, why is Mr X so surprised by this? He must know of Ruth's existence. Bethlehem was not a big town. All Boaz had to do to find Mr X was to wait by the city gate for a bit until he spotted him. 
Uh, back in chapter one, when Naomi and Ruth returned to Bethlehem, we're told that the whole town was stirred because of their arrival. It's not a secret that Ruth is there. Mr. X must know about Ruth. It can't be that. But look, if it were the law that if you get the field, you also get the widow, I'm a bit surprised that Mr. X doesn't know that. I'm surprised that he's surprised. Why doesn't he know? Is he ignorant of something everyone else seems to know? He doesn't come back and say, hey, that's not the law, you can't pin that on me. What he says, verse 6, is, well, then I cannot redeem it because I might endanger my own estate. You redeem it yourself, I cannot do it. Well, here's something interesting. The Hebrew text doesn't actually say in verse 5, Then Boaz said, On the day you buy the land from Naomi, you also acquire Ruth the Moabite, the dead man's widow, in order to maintain the name of the dead man with his property. It actually says this, Then Boaz said, On the day you buy the land from Naomi, I will acquire Ruth the Moabite the dead man's widow, in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property. That is, you have the field, Mr X, and I will marry Ruth. And I will do that according to the leveret arrangements, even though I'm not under any obligation to do so. Now, you might quite reasonably say, if that's what the Hebrew text says, then... Why does the NIV and all of the other English translations say that Mr X would get Ruth along with the field? Well, this is the Hebrew text of Ruth chapter 4, as it is found in the Leningrad Codex, which is the oldest complete text of the Hebrew Bible, dating from 1008 AD and is now kept in the National Library of Russia, in St. Petersburg. And here is verse 5, and here is the verb in question, and if you look at the consonants, it is very clearly the first person singular form of the verb, meaning, I will acquire. Kaniti. I acquire. So, literally here, uh, Ruth the Moabites, wife of the deceased, I will acquire. But something which happens a lot in the Hebrew Bible is that if the reading tradition differed from the written tradition, then the scribe would give you a little note in the margin. He didn't want to change the consonantal text because it was considered too holy to change. But he did want you to know that in the reading tradition you would actually say something different to what the text actually said. There are lots and lots of these in the Hebrew Bible. So if we shuffle over to the margin, you see this little letter here, like a, a back-to-front Q. That is the Hebrew letter Kof which stands for the word kire, meaning what is read. And above it you have a different form of the verb written, kanita, which is the second person masculine singular you will acquire. What this is telling us is that although the text said I will acquire, the tradition was to read you will acquire instead. Are you with me? And whenever this happens, there are debates about which one it should really be, the written or the read. Uh, debates which have quite often gone on down the centuries. Could a scribe have made a copying mistake at some point? Could the reading tradition have evolved for this reason or for that reason? Lots of things to consider pretty much every time this situation happens. 
Well now, in this case, it is most certainly the minority view to go with the written form rather than the red form. I completely admit that. That is why the NIV has what it has in common with all other English translations. It takes the curé, the red form. To me, though, the written form makes much more sense because in that case, the scene unfolds like this. Boaz says, hey, Mr. X, Naomi is selling a field. You're the closest guardian redeemer in the family. Do you want to redeem it? Mr. X says, I most certainly do, Boaz, old chap. Boaz says, OK, then, the moment you purchase the field from Naomi, you need to know that I am going to acquire Ruth the Moabitess, and I'm going to do that in accordance with the Leverett custom so that her dead husband's name may be maintained with his estate. And all of a sudden, this is not such good news after all, not such a good deal for Mr X, because if Boaz and Ruth produce a child, then that child will be entitled to the estate and Mr X will have to restore it to him in due course. So, no, he says to Boaz in verse 6, I've changed my mind. If that's how it's going to be, then you are welcome to the right of redemption of the land. Redeem it yourself. Boaz has not actually tricked an ignorant Mr X, as it appears at first sight. He has honestly told him of his intention to marry Ruth, come what may, and Mr X quickly works out the legal implications and backs out of the deal. So all this is about what happens when there is a difference between the written form of the Hebrew text in the Bible and the reading tradition noted in the margin by ancient scribes. In this case, the written form is, I will acquire Ruth the Moabitess. Uh, and the reading tradition is, you will acquire Mr X. Ruth the Moabitess. Which one makes the most sense? Well, there you go. I don't know if this explanation has made any sense, but uh, that's the technical note on Ruth chapter 4, verse 5.